Ever wondered why some people stay in harmful relationships despite the clear damage? This puzzling behavior can often be explained through the lens of trauma bonding. This is a powerful emotional connection that forms between an abused individual and their abuser, rooted in a harrowing cycle of violence. This bond, intriguing yet disturbing, can make leaving an abusive relationship incredibly challenging. To fully grasp this concept, we need to understand its stages. So, let's delve into the stages of trauma bonding, shall we? Stage 1. The Idealization Stage This is where the narcissist showers you with affection, praise, and attention. They make you feel like you're the center of their universe, the most important person in their world. This creates a strong emotional bond that can be hard to break. You feel deeply connected, and you might even believe you've found your soulmate. Everything seems perfect, just like a fairy tale. You're on cloud nine. But then, the isolation begins. Stage two, the isolation stage. The narcissist begins subtly, almost imperceptibly creating a chasm between you and your loved ones. They may critique your friends and family or orchestrate scenarios that make it challenging to maintain those connections. The goal? To make you more reliant on them, to ensure they become your world. This isolation is a strategic move meant to increase dependency and make it harder for you to leave. And just when you think it can't get worse, the devaluation starts. Stage three, the devaluation stage. This is where the narcissist's true colors start to show. Imagine a person you've come to trust who made you feel special, now criticizing you, belittling your achievements and devaluing your existence. Gradually, your self-esteem starts to crumble under the constant barrage of negativity. Verbal abuse, gaslighting, or the sudden withdrawal of affection may be their weapons of choice. This is all designed to control your emotions and keep you in their grasp. Next, the feelings of guilt and shame set in. Stage four, the guilt and shame stage. This is where the narcissist begins to blame you for their abusive behavior. They may say things that make you feel guilty and ashamed. You start to believe that you're at fault for their actions. You might even think that you deserve the abuse and try to make amends, hoping to regain their approval. It's a painful stage where the seeds of self-doubt are sown deep within you. Now it's time for denial and minimization. Stage 5. The Denial and Minimization Stage This is where reality becomes blurred. You find yourself downplaying the abuse, making excuses for the narcissist's behavior. You convince yourself, despite the mounting evidence, that things aren't as bad as they seem. Perhaps you're just overreacting, or maybe they're just having a bad day. You cling to the hope that things will improve, rationalizing their actions as a form of tough love. But as this stage progresses, the cycle tightens. Soon fear and intimidation take hold. Stage six, the fear and intimidation stage. Here, the narcissist employs threats and manipulation as control mechanisms. They may threaten to harm you themselves or even loved ones if you attempt to leave. This stage can evoke a deep sense of fear and trepidation, making you feel trapped and powerless. Moreover, the narcissist might exploit your vulnerabilities to further manipulate your behavior, driving the cycle of abuse deeper. But then, there's a glimmer of hope. Stage 7, the hope and hoovering stage. In this stage, the narcissist adopts a change of heart apologizing and reverting to their initial affectionate behavior. It's like a ray of sunshine after a storm, and you're led to believe that reconciliation is possible. This is a false dawn though, a mere ploy to keep you bonded. This cycle of abuse and apologies can repeat, creating a toxic loop that's hard to escape from. Cognitive dissonance sets in next. Stage eight, the cognitive dissonance stage. This stage is characterized by a whirlwind of conflicting emotions. The victim finds themselves in a perplexing bind torn between feelings of love and hate towards the narcissist. The manipulation has reached such a level that it becomes difficult to discern reality from illusion. Self-doubt creeps in, leading to confusion and indecisiveness. This internal tug of war is the crux of cognitive dissonance. Now we're on the brink of emotional exhaustion. Stage 9. The Emotional Exhaustion Stage Here, the unrelenting abuse and manipulation, 
begin to heavily tax the victim's mental and physical health. The constant emotional turmoil can lead to severe anxiety, depression, and even post-traumatic stress disorder. Feeling drained and depleted, the victim might struggle to maintain daily routines. This overwhelming exhaustion is not a sign of weakness, but a human response to prolonged emotional distress. And yet, in this profound fatigue, a glimmer of hope begins to flicker. Finally, the potential for healing and recovery emerges. Stage 10. The Healing and Recovery Stage. This is the light at the end of the tunnel, the stage where the transformation begins. With support and an abundance of self-compassion, you can start to heal from the trauma and piece together the fragments of your life. It's a journey, one that requires time and patience. There will be days of progress and there will be setbacks, but each step forward, no matter how small, is a victory. The process of healing is about learning to trust yourself again, rediscovering your strengths and acknowledging your worth. You survived and now it's time to thrive. You can break free from the cycle of abuse and regain control of your life. This stage is about empowerment, resilience, and ultimately self-love. Remember, these stages aren't a rigid timeline. The important thing is to recognize the dynamics and prioritize your own well-being. So what does all this mean for those trapped in the cycle of trauma bonding? The stages we've discussed outline a heart-wrenching journey a tumultuous dance between the narcissist and their victim. Idealization, isolation, devaluation, guilt and shame, denial, fear, hope, cognitive dissonance, and emotional exhaustion. These stages are not just words, they represent a reality for many people, a reality that is often shrouded in confusion and pain. The implications are profound. This cycle can erode self-esteem distort perceptions of reality, and drain emotional strength. But understanding these stages can be the first step towards breaking free. Recognizing the patterns can shine a light on the manipulation and control tactics of the narcissist. The final stage, healing and recovery, underscores the importance of seeking help and support. It's a testament to resilience, a beacon of hope in the darkness. Remember, you are not alone and there's help available. Prioritize your well-being above all else.